Hey guys, welcome to another Windows 7 video. In today's video, I'll go over specifically how it is that we can configure Windows 7 to work in VMware Workstation or VMware Player. So from what we could see right now, we don't have a very big screen um, and we're looking at basically a, uh, a probably a 1024 by 768 screen. And the reason why is because we can't install VMware's tools. VMware tools require specific Windows updates on Windows 7 to run. So let's go over what Windows updates we need and how we can get them installed. So the first step to installing the Windows updates on a Windows 7 machine is that we have to install a modern browser because the version of Internet Explorer that's shipped with the system will not work to download the stuff off the Microsoft catalog location. So let's go and open up the browser for Internet Explorer here. And we're going to just stop this because there's no reason for us to actually load the MSM website. It's going to be slow. It's not going to work right anyway because we're on IE8. Um, we don't need to configure anything in here because this is going to be a one-time thing. So we're going to go to google.com. So it's https colon forward slash forward slash google.com. Okay, so we're at Google. So then we need, say, Chrome. Okay, so we're going to download Chrome. It's going to tell us we won't get updates because Chrome is no longer supported for this operating system, and that's okay. We're going to set it as the default, um, but we're not going to help Google because it doesn't make any difference. And we're going to accept, and then we're going to run. And then we're going to run. And yes, and while this is happening, we could close Internet Explo uh, Explorer. Excuse me, I was going to call it Internet Exploder, um, but that's really what it was. Okay, so we now have Chrome installed. All right, so where we have to go now is we have to go to the Microsoft catalog to download the updates, but I find that using the... Um, the Chrome browser and Google itself to look for the KBs is the easier way to do it. So we're going to download three KBs and then we're going to download a package from Major Geeks. So the KBs we need are KB447-4419, KB449-0628, and KB312-5574. As far as the Major Geeks download, I'll put the link in the description for you to get the package from there as well as well as the package uh the update catalog links will be in the description as well for uh the kbs i just uh disclosed once we have those things downloaded we'll kick up the video from that point okay so at this point i've downloaded all the updates i've already installed the first two this is the third one in order to install the updates all you really do is right click on the thing and do open and that'll install the update you'll get prompted and asked whether or not you want to continue the only thing to keep in mind is that drive space is an issue when you're doing these updates um, these are more modern versions of windows 7 so that requires more modern uh, or rather modern uh, drive allocation uh, availability ultimately what you're going to need is at least 15 if not a 20 gig hard drive uh, with enough space to install these updates because it's going to unpack them before it installs them and unpacks this particular update. It's close to six gigs in size. And once you install it, then it will subtract it slightly so it won't take as much space installed as it does to unpack it before it installs it. And the same will be said about the next update, which is the uh, service pack. It's an unofficial service pack too for Windows 7. Um, which gives you all the updated files required in order for you to actually use the Windows Update function of Windows 7. And then once we get to that point, we'll run the rest of the updates to the Windows Update function. And then once we have the Windows Update function completed, I'll give you the step-by-step -step process on how to install the updates all the way to today. Uh, I think the most current update for Windows 7 is February of 2024. So, and Microsoft actually just announced recently that they're going to support Windows 7 for all security functions and features under the ex, uh, extended support logic until at least 2026. So if you want to continue to use this with all the security updates, 
you could still use this with all the security updates just as secure as you would with Windows 10 and Windows 11. And likely more secure than Windows 10 if the end of life Windows 10 next year, that means Windows 7 will be supported longer than Windows 10 was. Okay guys, so after all the official updates have installed, you'll come back in here, you'll grab your update pack, you'll right click on it, you'll run it as administrator, you'll be prompted to install, you'll click install, and this box will pop up and run the unpacking of the temporary files, and then install the updates for Windows 7, um, probably to, I think it's 2016's patch revision. And then once that's finished, at that point, we're gonna jump back in here. We'll install VMware tools. We'll get the full screen so you can see it. And then once we have that done, we will go through the process of installing the regular Windows updates on the system before we go through the ESU package, which is the extended support, which will give us the updates all the way through to current. Okay guys, so now that we have our updates run, let's install VMware tools on the system so we get full screen. I really like to do complete. You can do typical or customize what it is you want, but for the sake of these virtual machines, they virtually take up no space, so there's no reason to not just completely install it. All right, so we're gonna reboot this thing. Okay, so the system's coming back up. We're gonna log into it. And there we go, now we got a full screen. So those updates that we just ran are required in order for us to install VMware tools. Just they require the, uh, the, the additional support for the installation packages in order for this to run. So now that we have the drivers, the prerequisites installed to install our VMware tools, our hypervisor configuration. We have the ability now to have full screen, USB support and everything else. I'll add the links in the description for the packages required to get that to work. I'll also add the link in the description if you guys wanna check out the next video which is how to install all the extended support Windows updates on a Windows 7 machine without the need for WSUS services. Uh, I'll add that as well, so that way you guys could check out that video. I'll also add in that video description um, all the links to all the KBs required, as well as the catalog links, how to get the extended support to work on a non-extended support system, as well as how to use extended support through WSUS. I'll add those links as well. Hopefully that's helpful, and I will catch you guys in the next one.